Good morning, good morning. Let me just move this camera. <laughs> it's very low. Hold on a second. You can see all my double chins. That's not so good. Here we go. Good morning. Good morning. It's Kate Bolt, independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the UK uh, for another Coffee and Cards Live, a new, another weekly paper crafting session. Good morning to you all. How are you? I'll just wait a few moments and see if anyone pops on live. I can see a couple of you popping on. Oh, I've got, I've got a hair in my eye. <laughs> Leave me a comment to let me know you're here. I'd love to know who's joining me and where you're from. Oh, that's better. Morning, Helen. Thank you for joining me. Uh, yeah, it's a beautiful day. Well, actually, it's a bit cloudy. Good morning, lovely Lynn. How are you? Hello, Claire. Lovely to have you. Um, it's a bit cloudy here, but I went out for a walk with the dog after the school run this morning. And uh, it was really rather pleasant. Very cold. It was two degrees. So it was gloves weather and my hands were a bit numb by the time I came back. But it was so nice to get outside in the fresh air. So good morning to you on this wintry morning. I hope you are well. Let me know how you're doing and what you've been up to. If you've been doing any crafting. You're working, Linny, and watching me in the background. Well, that's very kind of you in your working day to manage to pop me on as well. You're so kind. Uh, yeah, if any of you have any friends who might like this kind of thing, do share. Uh, you can share the live and they can ha watch along too and see if they like it. It'd be lovely uh, to have them. So, I've got something to share with you today. and I put it up on my blog last night as part of a big blog hop I take part in every month but I was going to show you another version of it today and show you how I made it. Now I'll show you what inspired me by the project we're going to make today. It is this gorgeousness. This gorgeousness. Do you see this? Let me see if I can turn this around. I haven't done this bit for a while. Oh my lord. <laughs> Here we go. There it says hey there and look this is this sweet is retired but these I absolutely love this. This is last autumn. Sweet. And my teamy, uh, lovely lady in my team, Joanne Tyrrell, you might know her. She is lovely and she made me this. Now, we've just recently done a team swap. And when we swap cards in a team swap, we like to uh, include the recipe inside the card of what we have made our swap with so that we could recreate it if we like to. Um, jo included this in my swap not it isn't the swap she included it in my swap and in here it says do katie love and joe and in here on the back she has written the swap recipe how clever is she and how pretty is that and she's even put things on the back with love from joe isn't it just gorgeous i love this i'm gonna keep it i keep all handmade things that people send to me so I'm trying to see how I now get my comments back. There we are. Hi, Jen. Good morning. So I love this, this little creation and it's been sat on my desk with my swaps for a couple of weeks and I'm like, I must recreate this. So I recreated it yesterday. And in a minute, I'll turn the camera around and I'll show you how I made it. And I made it into a full size card. Um, yeah, and I'll show you that. Just having my coffee. I've got my Mickey Mouse. I've got Mickey on my cup today. He's an artist, look. Gotta have a bit of Disney in there. Mm. Oh my gosh, sorry, that's so nice. Sometimes you just need a coffee, don't you? Oh, it's very hot, so that's why I was a minute or two late. I was off making coffee for me and hubby, who's hubby's working from home, so we were just doing that. Okay, lots of Stampin' Up! news coming out at the moment. If you are in my team, uh, you will know that you can now see the mini catalogue digital copy on our demonstrator website. Oh, Jen, definitely get your cuppa because I'm just chatting for a couple of minutes, just a couple of minutes, not long. So that's very exciting because I've seen it already because I went to a big Stampin' Up! conference on the weekend. It was amazing. Good morning, Philomena. Lovely to have you called On Stage and it's a Stampin' Up! demonstrators and we all attended this three day virtual event. It was amazing. I loved it. Completely filled my cup. Oh, what a lovely Stampin' Up! crafting community we are part of. And there was lots of sharing, lots of inspiration, lots of connecting, lots of learning. It was just brilliant, lots of fun. Um, so I got to see the new catalogue already. But um, for those people who chose not to attend, because this is an optional thing, um, in my team, they can see the catalogue on the website now. 
Yes, I can go to get coffee with you, Jen. If you just take your phone or whatever you're watching me on with you, you can you can hear me blathering on in the background. Uh, yeah, so that was that. So that's news. Um, and we, as demonstrators, can pre-order from the new catalogue from the 1st of December. And I've already pre-ordered as part of the perk of attending that big on-stage conference. I can't wait for those goodies to come. I'm so excited. They should be coming this week. So yeah, that's good. We have some uh, promotions going on that I really need to share with you. We have got a seasonal sale. It's called the seasonal sale and it starts today. It's for two days only. It's running till the 16th to the 18th. Um, so it'll be in the evening of the 18th, not in the night, in the evening when it stops because it started last evening, if that makes sense. It's 48 hour sale. And you get, let me see, 10% of all card stocks you get 15% off the ink pads and you get 20% off any of the dyes in the annual catalogue. That's a really good sale. So if you're collecting any of the ink pad colours or you want the co coordinating cardstock or anything like that, or if you have any dyes you've had your eye on, interestingly, I bought a couple of stamp sets in the annual for one reason or another and didn't buy the dyes and I should be getting those because I get 20% off. In fact, I get 45% I get off because of my demonstrator discount. Yay, it's a win-win. And the other promotion we've got going on is this start with savings. And you might have seen this all over social media if you follow any kind of stamping up stuff. It's on my website, inkstampshare.ink, on my blog. Start with savings. And basically, the starter kit, the joining kit at the moment is the best. It's incredible. We've got this offer going on just for November, finishes at the end of the month, where you can choose £130 of any products you like in your joining kit and get it for £75 with free shipping. So the reason I'm telling you this is because if you are taking if you are taking advantage of the sale these two days, you could put sale items in your starter kit and get even more off. Does that make sense? You get much more value in your starter kit and you get to join my lovely team. And there's a few people who have taken advantage of this offer and my team is growing. It's fabulous. I love it. So it's a no-brainer. There is no strings attached, you know. It's brilliant. So you'll find all the information over on my blog at inkstampshare.ink or you can look at my shop. If you don't want to go over there to my blog where you can find all the shop, but you can find my shop at katebolt.stampinup.net. That's all the, all the stuff I'm going to tell you about the offers that are on, but they're too good to miss. <sighs> okay. So, shall we get crafting? Because I could just chat on and it gets a bit boring. Right, let me grab my coffee. And then I'll show you afterwards. Don't let me forget, because I'm good at saying I'll show you and then I forget. Um, I'll show you the cards I made on stage. Because that was fun. That was a lot of fun. Right, I'm going to turn the camera around and we're going to do some crafting. So, hold on to your hats. Here we go. Just... Uh, Apologise for this awkward, clunky moment. Here we go. I'm going to bring the camera down. I'm going to pop you onto the grid paper so it looks a bit dark for a second. And then I am going to turn the tripod around, pop you up. You can see what colour we're using. Does it look a bit Christmassy? It's very Christmassy. Now, I'm sorry, I know it's only November, but if you're a card maker <laughs> or a crafter and you're into your Christmas things, I'm sure you've been crafting already. Some of us start in like July, but no. Okay, November's all right, isn't it? So, how does that look? Does that look okay? I'm hoping that looks okay. All right, okay, we are gonna be having fun. Now, I'll show you again what Jo made. So she made this amazing little doodad. I call it a pocket card. Um, and then she put her recipe on the back and I just scaled it up. And I'll show you what I made for the blog hop I was in last night. And then we're going to recreate and make a Christmas one. Oh, thank you, Philomena. Thank you. So I made this one. So I just scaled it up. I used the Eden's Garden papers. They are absolutely beautiful. Um, so my insert, I, I use the Eden's Garden papers and they're gold foiled. So they've got little gold dots on if you can see i use the uh the they call garden eden garden dies i use a die cut for the front and the inside 
and I did a little bit of heat embossing in gold and I used a splatter stamp from the Whale of a Time stamp set because um, it's a nice splatter. It's meant to be bubbles in the ocean, but I like to think of it as a splatter. Morning, Hazel. Morning, Kay. Lovely of you to join us. Um, I used the gold bumblebees from the... Mm, what suite are they from? They're in the annual catalogue. Oh, not sure. Which, they're in one of the catalogues and they are the, gold, the golden bumblebees. And they might be part of the Harvest Meadow Suite. I can't remember. <laughs> but they are available. I use this soft succulent. So I took my inspiration for the colours from the designer series paper. A good tip if you don't know what colours to put together, grab your DSP and see what they've used. You know you're onto a winner with the colours they've put together. So I use soft succulent cardstock here. And there's soft succulent, garden green and gold in the papers. So I use not garden green, ever, evening evergreen, soft succulent, even e evening evergreen and gold. So this is um, stamped in evening evergreen. This card base is evening evergreen. I've used soft succulent ribbon or evening evergreen ink. So they all kind of ties together. So this is my thank you card for my customers for this month. So it'll go off in the post. It's the same as the C6 size it's just slightly smaller actually so it'll fit in an envelope perfectly thank you philomena it's joe's design and all i did was make it bigger and i don't know if she's watching this morning and yeah it just pulls in and out and i've got thank you you're amazing now when i'm demoing when i'm showing people something i try to stick to one bundle so that if they want to recreate it they don't have to have all the supplies in the universe Thank you, Shaz. That's really kind. But last night I went a bit off piece and I just raided my stash because it, and it was really liberating. And I just grabbed things from here and there and I had a great time. So I would suggest use whatever you have. Don't feel you have to have all the same things to recreate something. Use what you've got. So I used this die it was from the Pretty Pillow Box dies. The rest of this is from the Eden Suite. Um, the bees are from somewhere else. So, you know, use what you've got. Absolutely love it. And then you need somewhere to write your sentiment. So on the back, instead of putting another little card, I just glued on a thank you message and I used the Stitch So Sweetly dies for a little frame in white. And that's what I've done. So they're my customer thank yous this month. And I just thought they were a bit special. And what I'm probably going to do is pop a little post-it note inside and leave it blank so that they can use it in themselves. Excuse me, and send it on to someone. And I'm going to show you how to make it or how I made mine. Okay, so I have a little template. It's very simple to make. And I wondered if I'm going to make it Christmassy, what papers I should use. So I started with the papers and I pulled out, I've got some of the gingerbread and peppermint papers. Ah, oh, Joe's an oh yes, thanks for reminding me. She is an appointment today, isn't she? Ah, oh, well, she'll probably watch it later and go, oh, there's my thing, hopefully. So these are the gingerbread and peppermint papers, and they are beautiful. They're really Christmassy, really nice, and they're vibrant, but not too vibrant. Do you know what I mean? They're those traditional reds and greens with a bit of I thought it was crumb cake, but it's not. That colour is cinnamon cider. So yeah, those are the papers. So I picked out a few sheets of that. I know I'll need two. So I thought I will use this one for embellishing. And I got two pieces. And I picked out two pieces of cardstock in the cinnamon, one in the cinnamon, one in a real red to, to match. So I'm gonna start off with the, with the base. It's very simple to make. I'm only making one card today because it's a bit special one. <laughs> okay. Right, here we go. So I'm going to cut this exactly the same as I would with a regular card, okay? So I'm going to go to 14.8 and cut it in half. So you can make two from this. So I'm going to leave my other piece of real red over there. And then I've got to remember what I'm doing then. Instead of scoring it straight away in half, I'm not. I'm going to go to the edge, the edge here, and I'm going to score it at one centimeter so not cut score okay and then I'm going to turn it around to so the short edges at the top and I want to score that at one centimeter as well okay so 
just fold the lines over like that. Now you will find that because a piece of cards, A4 cardstock, if I pull that out, you can see, it comes to 21, okay, centimeters. And I've taken one off, so what I've got left is 20. So I'm gonna score it in half at 10 centimeters from this edge or the crease line. Just make sure it's in half. So let's butt that up, 10 centimeters, scoring blade, not cutting blade. And then we will have this idea, which is our little pouch. Okay, so I'm gonna move this one out of the way for a moment. Don't need that now for a bit. Okay, this is the fun bit. We get a little bit of cutting, but not too much. All right, now I am actually going to cut, if I have the margin on the left hand side, the bottom piece on the right hand side, I'm going to cut away. Now, use your trimmer if you prefer, doesn't really matter, you're just going to chop it off. So you cut that one off, that's rubbish. Okay. I'm going to cut this little tiny square out of the edge, like that. And I'm going to kind of make this into a tab. Nothing scientific about it, it's just so that it doesn't poke out the edges when I fold it over. Okay, so that's the base. So if I, if I, if you get your bone folder, make your creases sharp, but mine's out of reach. Okay, now we're going to glue this together to make our pocket. And I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use tear and tape. I think I used Tombow yesterday. The thing is, tear and tape is really good. And I like using it for boxes and things. But you just do, do be careful as well because you don't have as much wriggle room to get it right. So I'm going to use a bit of that on there. And I'm going to use a bit of that. Do I, I actually, Shaz, that's a really good point. Um, when you're cutting on the score line, so what did I do with that bit? Here it is. I cut the core score line away. So I cut literally, literally just above the score line. So when I put this bit in the bin, you can see that little score line there and it just makes this edge neater. Thank you. Really does. So. A little bit of tear and tape there, and then press it right down and take the edges off. I don't know where I put my pick, pick your tool, take your pick tool, it's here somewhere. There we go, let's get rid of that. Take your pick tool, perfect for this. <laughs> okay. So I am going to glue that onto there already. And then I am going to just, there we go. We have a nice little pocket. Nice little pocket. Easy, easy peasy lemon squeezy. <laughs> so I wrote my measurements. Regular C6 card size, 14.8 by 10.5. I scored one centimetre this way and one centimetre that way. That leaves two panels here, which are 10 centimetre each, and the score line is down the middle, not counting that. Okay, and then I've glued it together to make this. Okay, now I think the next thing I am going to do is I am going to take my piece of designer series paper that's going to go on the front so i chose this fun pretty one with all the they're meant to be gingerbread cookies or baubles with her uh, gingerbread cookies with icing on i think they're great so what i've got left now is a 10 centimeter panel so i think i'm going to score this i don't know how much border i want to leave not much so i think i'm going to score it at about 9.7 that way lives a tiny border doesn't it and how big is it this way now it's still 14.8 no it's not that way because I've done a centimeter at the bottom it's 13.8 so if I do it by about 13.5 and we'll see what it looks like we can always trim it
just leaves a tiny border for the red, which is what I like. Just a little bit, not too much. Yes, let's go for that then. Hello, Amanda from sunny Spain. It is beautiful DSP. It's gorgeous. I haven't used it yet. I can't believe it. But that side's so nice. Oh, look at that. Oh, I like that. Which side am I going to use? Which side should I use? I think... Oh, I don't know now. Now you've got me. Right, I think I'm gonna, before I decide which way round it's going to go, I'm going to do the insert. That's a bit of a cop-out, isn't it? So, my insert now. How big did I make it? It's probably going to be about nine. Nine it is. Yeah. So my insert, I'm going to take the coordinating cardstock. So I just picked a piece of cinnamon cider and I'm going to go nine centimetres. So it's a centimetre smaller than the outside. Uh, I'm going to go 13.3. What I'll do is I've not written these measurements down on my blog post, but I'll pop back into that uh, and write them down so that you don't have to remember them. So that will now fit in and out of there perfectly. Could have actually been a tad wider, but that's okay. That's nice, nice fit. Is it the same size? Yeah, it is the same size, so happy days. So if I do this piece, I think I want that one to coordinate. So there we are, that was worth the wait. <laughs> How what's the weather like in sunny Spain? Uh, is it sunny, Amanda? It sounds fabulous. So I'm going to make this 8.5, or no, maybe 8.7, to leave a skinny border by about 13, I think. Is that right? Yes. And save all your scraps of DSP, they will come in useful. All right, so the next thing I can do is just stick it down. Grab my Tombow, I think. Got a bit of gluey bit stuck on the end. A little bit of glue. Seems such a shame <laughs> covering it all up. I'm gonna have to do some more with this paper, it's so nice. Oh, I'm excited because tonight I have my team meetup. So every month we have a team meetup, it's virtual, so everyone can come because I've got team members all over the country now, which is fabulous. Um and we've got a virtual meeting and we get to do some crafting together. We we kind of arrange a, a make and take, if you like. Yeah, and uh, we share all the news and we have a bit of a giggle. I'm quite looking forward to that. Yes. Have such a lovely team. Oh, that is slightly too wide on one side. Oh, no, it's okay. I still have a border just, just about. I think this is dark as well. You can't see it so well. Okay. Oh, one more piece of uh, equipment that I do need is my trusty hole punch. Now, we don't stock this anymore, but you can get them pretty much anywhere. Any kind of little hole punch you're going to want for the top of your insert so that you can pull it in and out. Okay. And I just eyeball the middle. Make sure you're not too close to the top. You don't want to break it and just there you are little punch or you could use your pierce tool with a pierce mat so i have seen that done wherever i put my here it is so my take your pick tool it has a sharp pierce tool so you can make a hole with that that will definitely work and i have got some of this gorgeous rouge red, bleh, say it red real red ruched ribbon but i need to check i've got enough for what i want to do it with do with it so i want a bit to go around the front 
a bit like a belly band. Oh, it's 15 degrees. It feels much warmer in the sun. I'll bet it does. That sounds so mild. That's nice. You enjoy that. That's lovely. I've got plenty for what I need. So before I used it for both the top and the belly band, I wanted to make sure I had enough of it left. I must get some more of this. It's so pretty. Very, very Christmassy. Okay. So now I know I've got enough to go through here. Um, I want a nice tab to be able to pull, but not, I don't want it like <laughs> too long to be look, looking ridiculous either. So I think just a little bit shorter, maybe about like, maybe, because I'm going to have to tie it around, so maybe a bit longer. We can always, <clears throat> excuse me, we can always cut it off. Can't we? So let's have a go at this. Pop it through. It's quite a fat ribbon, this one, compared to the one I used on the other one. Let's see how it works. It's very fat. <laughs> it's very fat, but I like it. So nice. There we go. So that's that. Uh, that's the bit I need. So I've got that piece done. Now I'm going to go around the front of my card with this piece. Is this one a bit shorter? Pretty much of a muchness, I'm just going to chop it off. I don't want it quite as long as that. Oh, here we go. So I was very excited um, attending the on-stage event for Stampin' Up! Demonstrators this weekend because uh, Stampin' Up! recognise us for reaching milestones and goals in our Stampin' Up! business. And um, I was very surprised <laughs> to learn that I got, I reached level one in uh, leadership and level two in team building for the past Stamping Up year. Little old me. I was very excited to find this out. I had no idea. Uh, obviously, I'm always uh, trying to build my business and better my best but I didn't and during the pandemic it's been very hard we've all pivoted I've had to switch my business from mainly kind of on person and a little, little online to nearly all online and a tiny bit in person now we're allowed but um so excited thank you Helen so excited to find out and then yesterday they released the figures for the Basically, on stage, they released the figures then for those who came top five and ten in the country, um, of which my wider team did amazingly well. So excited for them. Um, and But yesterday, they released the figures for the rest. And um, I was stunned that I came out of all the Stampin' Up! demonstrators in the whole of the United Kingdom. I came number 24th for team building. <laughs> Number 24, little old me in the whole of the UK. I was uh, oh, blown away, blown away. So I'm very excited. So now I've got, now I've got to stop blathering on. Um, I've got my ribbon around there and I'm going to do a little bit of stamping because it's about time I stamped, isn't it? So I don't have the stamps and dies that go with this paper, unfortunately, because they're gorgeous. I just didn't get them, but I thought I would use something from the Happy Holidays, which I really like this one. So I've got out Happy Christmas and I've got out Sharing the Promise of the Season. So I'm hoping that they're going to fit on a die that I've pulled out. And I've got some basic white scrap cardstock in my... Thank you, Amanda. I've got my real red ink pad. So let's see. Happy Christmas. It's beginning to feel a lot like... Yeah, it is, isn't it? Let's see if this will fit. It's a very long die. That's such a nice 
one. I really smooshed that down. I'm going to try it again. No smooshing required. Tap, tap, tap. That's better. <laughs> now, will this dye go around it? Oh, my word. That is spot on. Couldn't have asked for that, could I? Now, this dye is from the Harvest Meadow stamp set and dye bundle. So I just raided my stash for a sentiment and a dye that would fit it. Just do that if you want to recreate it. Or if you don't have a dye or don't even use dyes, cut a rectangle around your sentiment. It will be perfect. Right. That's just as good. Right, popping it through my cutting machine, which is right next to me. I really like this die cut because it has like this little embossed edge all the way around it. Yes. So happy Christmas. That's going to go on here. Oh, it's quite long, isn't it? I didn't expect it to cover up quite as much of the um, <laughs> ribbon as that, but that's fine. And while we're at it, we're going to stamp the other one. So... I might need an, another piece of scrap because I've made a mess of it, but that's all right. Here we go. I have a lot of scrap next to me. I keep all my bits. So the bit that's going to go inside is sharing the promise of the season. Here we go. Oh! <laughs> I just put the sticker on that before I came on live. <laughs> it's upside down. Am I going to remember when I use this stamp that I have stuck the sticker on upside down? Because I'm telling you now, there is no getting that sticker off of there. <laughs> oh, Lord. How many times am I going to now stamp that upside down? <laughs> Which is okay if you're doing it like this, but if you stamp it straight onto your project, it could be fun. I think I'm going to have to uh, put a little dot on there or something to remind me to think about it. <laughs> oh, dear. Listen, if I can make these mistakes, we all can, surely. Oh, love it. I'm so glad I didn't stamp that onto a project straight on during a live. Although you would have all had a bit of a laugh. I'm sure. <laughs> right, okay. Sharing the promise of the season is going to go on here. But it's slightly too long. <clears throat> Excuse me, I didn't check that, did I, when, before I did it? So I might to just chop the end off. I don't think I've got a shorter die that would go around there. I might have, but it would take me a while to find it. So let's just chop the end off. And it looks fine. Will it fit? It looks like it's meant to be. Almost. Oh yeah, that looks nice actually. So I've still got that embossed edge along the top. Maybe a little arrow showing the right way. Yes, that's exactly what I need. Honest to goodness. I don't think I've ever managed that before. Well, there's a first for everything. I managed to stick the sticker on because it's the same shape. <laughs> Upside down all the right way up. I stuck it on the wrong way. Absolutely flipping typical, isn't it? So... How ridiculous. Now I'm starting to think, have I stuck this down hard? Yes, that's stuck down hard. Okay, I'm starting to think that I might uh, move my ribbon up, but that's fine, it's gonna stay there now. Okay. I'm gonna stick this one on. Have I got any foam pads out? I need to 
Never mind, little ones will do. Maybe I should stick it down flat. Because of the bulk and it going through the post, I think I'm going to stick it down flat because you've got the layers. I think that would be better. And then you don't end up charged more because once you're getting past one set of dimensionals, you are you are paying for a large letter because it's too fat. Let's put plenty of glue on. There we are. I'm going to leave that for a minute to dry because it's actually sticking onto the ribbon, so it needs to take a while. Can move it around a bit as well. And if it doesn't stick, I'll use double sided tape. It's thinking about it, it's got quite a lot of uh, texture to stick onto. Okay, while that's doing that, we're going to put this one on, sharing the promise of the season. I can't believe I stuck a sticker on upside down, that's ridiculous. So, sharing the promise of the season in the middle. And then I have pulled out some of these. These, this is just a designer series paper. Um, but I thought this would be great just to cut one of these out and put these on here. So I'm going to try and fussy cut one of these out. Let's see how it goes. Because this is very red, I think I'm going to go for the green. Then it'll tie in with the front. You know, gingerbread is my absolute favourite. And I've got this absolutely brilliant recipe for sticky gingerbread. And I only bake it at Christmas. And it's just for, it's from Nigella's Christmas book, if you're interested. Her Christmas recipe book. Oh my God, it makes the house smell absolutely amazing and it tastes it's almost like it's like a pudding almost you can have it with like ice cream you can have it warm with like ice cream or custard and uh it just is christmas <laughs> i've also got a really nice recipe for big soft ginger cookies oh my gosh i need to cook those too what are your oh thank you hazel what are your do you have any favorite recipes that you cook around christmas time it doesn't have to be baking i do love baking i just don't do it very often but i really love it so satisfying <laughs> I've already got all the ingredients in um, to make the sticky gingerbread because I knew that I was going to have to make it very soon. Oh, do you? You make Italian Christmas cookies. Morning, Sylvia. What are they like, Philomena? Do share. Oh, yes. I love a baked ham at Christmas. Boiled fruit cake is your Christmas cake with... Oh, Hazel, my mouth is watering. Do you know what? It'd be really nice if we could share some of these recipes, wouldn't it? Should we share them on the um, ink stamp share your craft group? Because baking's a craft, surely. Oh, Lucy, anything with cinnamon, I completely agree with you. I love fruitcake though, and I only eat it at Christmas for some reason, not out of intention. Um, love it. Boiled fruitcake sounds amazing. A friend of mine once made a tea cake. Not a tea cake in the sense of a chocolate one, it was like a tea loaf, a fruit loaf. And I think it's soaked in tea or something. Now I don't like tea, but this cake was incredible. It was so nice. So we got one of those. And I think we might have, I think it might be odd to do more than, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut out a couple. I might do a bell. 
That'll be a quicker job to cut out, won't it? I'm sure the dyes, tell me, does anyone know, do the dyes cut these shapes out of the paper? I'm sure they probably do. And then you don't have to stand there and fussy cut them. <laughs> like me. Oh, thank you, Hazel. Oh my God, I'm going to be cooking. I'm really sorry, I'm going to be cooking fruitcake now. I'm going to be cooking up a storm. <laughs> oh dear. There's all that talk of gingerbread and ginger cookies and baked ham. Yes, they do. What do they do? What did I say, Jen? Sorry. Right, okay, so we've got a bell. We've got a snowflake. And then I think we need I think we need one more snowflake. And I'm gonna do the red one. I'm gonna cut it in half and it's gonna hang off the edge. Oh yes they do, the shapes do. Ah, sorry, I just had a light bulb moment. Oh Jen, they do, do they? Oh my god, it's such a good set then. I got to that point though, I don't know about you, I've got so many Christmas items, so many. <laughs> oh, shame though, because this is just the kind of thing I like, I love this so much. We might have to hop into my basket yet, you know. <laughs> that would be good. Right, concentrating. Meatball cookies. Very traditional. Right, I'm going to have to look those up, Philomena. That's absolutely fascinating. I have never um, heard of that. Never heard of that. And you make it in the slow cooker, Amanda. You make a fruit cake in the slow cooker. That's incredible. I have a slow cooker. I would love to do that. I bet it smells amazing. Oh, can you imagine? Oh, thank you. I will look that up, Philomena. Meatball cookies. dog snoring <laughs> the dog is snoring behind me right so yeah this is gonna go on here and yeah so I had another idea about this as well but I'm not gonna do it today but I thought this was because I have put my um sentiment down here but if I hadn't put it here maybe put it at the top this is just a loyalty card for a shop we have in the UK called The Body Shop, but it's the same size as most gift cards that you can buy. And what I would suggest is maybe put your sentiment further up and add your gift card in and you've made a gift card holder and you could put one of the, just the glue dots on and to keep it together, to stick it in. Do they look amazing? I can't wait to find out about these cookies now. I wish I hadn't put that there. But yeah, so pop your... In fact, I could still put it there, couldn't I? So put your uh, gift card here. I might leave that there and just pop that there like that. I'm gonna glue those down. Couldn't decide where to put things. Yeah, no, I'm gonna use this as a gift card holder. So. I am going to put the glue on the back of my gingerbread cookie. I'm going to have him almost on, but not quite. And the same with my bell. I'll bring him down a bit. Thank you. It was in my head and then I forgot to add it on. 
because it was Joe's idea with this. What have I done with her little sample? With this one here, which is incredible, I love it. That's perfect gift card size, isn't it? So that's what made me think of it, to be fair. So you could make a tiny one like that, or you could make a big one, and then you could put your gift card in it. Yeah, so that's stuck down, and then I'm gonna go to the back, and I'm gonna chop off the edge. So you know when you have designer series paper and the images go all the way to the edge and they're stamped randomly so they won't have the whole thing all the way like this. That's what that looks a bit like. And then I will stick that on there with a glue dot. I'll go on here, look. Just for display purposes because it's, it's a loyalty card, not a gift card. <sighs> These little glue dots, they're much like the glue dots a gift card come with, aren't they? So you can pop that on there. You can pop it in here. Like that. And then you want one of those and one of these from green. I'm sure if you have a little circle punch, you could uh, punch out the little sweeties rather than hand cutting those. Yeah, so I'll just cut this one out quickly. I'm nearly at the end of making this. It's like a pocket card and it can be used as a gift card holder as well. Yeah. And you can make it as simple or as complicated as you like with your decoration. You don't have to stand here and fussy cut out images. You can do what you like, like I did with the other one that's a thank you card. Thanks, Shaz. Definitely have a go. It's, it's not a difficult one. It's quite fun. I like easy. <laughs> Nearly there. So, don't forget to stock up on your cardstock and your ink pads and your dies with a sale today and tomorrow. We, uh, we all need stuff we can use all year round but still get it at a discount, so get it while you can. Here we go. Yes, yeah, so I'll pop the link to my shop in the description as well. And don't forget, if you do go shopping with me, don't forget to use the host code and then I can send you a handmade card and thank you gift at the end of the month. Say thank you for shopping with me. There we go. So I think I'm going to bring it here and have it like that. Going to glue that down. Coming off the edge. And I have this one on the edge of there, like that. Is there a way up? I don't know. I don't mind. There we are. Have some kind of symmetry. I don't think it really matters. I might bring it over a bit actually. Now, if it was a card, I would pop these up, but um, because there's so many layers and it's going to go through the post, I think I'm going to leave it like that, stuck down flat. And I'm just going to trim the edge off that one. There we go. And then I've got some of these. I've got some of the basic red rhinestone jewels. I've just got a few left on this little piece sheet and I'm going to pop some of those on just to make it look nice and I will put somewhere 
also on the back. Oh, wonder if it'll go in the middle. Oh, look at that. That looks nice. <laughs> I am so easily pleased, honestly. Put that in the middle of there, and then we'll have a few dotted about. One here, so you can see the contrast of the red on the cinnamon cider. And there. And one down here as well. So we've got this. We've got this. Now the only other thing we need to do is somewhere to write on. So let me grab that guy because I think I put it away. Trying to be tidy. Trying is the operative word. Thank you. Yeah. Look at the state of these. Honestly, trying to be tidy. So let's have a look at what size it was, the one I made. Was it this one? Yes, it was. That one's too small. I've already got one cut out that was a bit small. So let's grab a piece of white. Have I got a scrap left? I've got loads of scraps. Here we go. Will this be big enough? Oh, perfect, that one. Thank you. It's very festive, all the reds and greens. You're right. Love it. I'm starting to feel festive. Now, we did a thing last year that we have never done before. We are the family in the road that puts the Christmas lights up outside the house at the last minute. You know, the week before Christmas. Now, last year, with everything that was going on with the pandemic and everything, everyone was putting theirs up super early. And so we joined along and I actually found, you know, you get your time hop on Facebook and things like that to tell you the photographs that you took the year before. We had actually got ours up by now <laughs> last year. So that made me really festive looking at that photo. I think we will be not maybe that early this year, but be putting them up soon. Which the die set, the dies, the little pillow box dies came in. It comes in the pretty pillow box dies. That's what it's called, Jen. Let me find it for you. Pretty pillow box dies. Oh, I think this is part of the peppermint and gingerbread suite as well, actually. Comes like this. Is that what you're looking for? It's got this gorgeous little tag. That would look perfect on there, wouldn't it? If you want to do something else, you could put a little tag on there with a name on it, to and from. That would be so nice. You wouldn't need to do anything else then, would you? But yeah, so that's that. And that's the die that I was using when I made the other one um, last night. That that one there from the Pretty Pillow Box. I see so good. I love these dies. I've yet, I have played a little, but I feel it has masses of potential for all sorts. All sorts of things. Okay, sharing the promise of the season. Now, we have got... I could just put, I was going to put a big slushy sentiment on there, but I think I'm just going to put for you. Do you know what? It would have looked nice on that little tag, wouldn't it, for you? But I'm going to put it up here. I haven't even stuck the sticker on it. So let's see, shall we, if I can stick the sticker on the right way up. You can't find your dies, Jen. do you right so this is a tip when you're going to stick your stickers on take one of the pieces of protective stuff off take the one off the back of your stamp line it up preferably the right way up <laughs> you can pull it off and then you can take the other one off quite easily you can push it back sometimes if it's a small stamp yeah you found them <laughs> brilliant so little block Little block. Here's a tip to know if you've got the right size block. Um, having one massive block, all your stamping may feel economical. It doesn't help you. Having the right size block is important. You don't have to have all of the sizes, but the trick to know if you've got the right size block is if you put a stamp on a block and it's too big, 
If it doesn't stand up and it wobbles around, your block is too big. And that's when you will get halos and you'll get ink everywhere. You'll get ink on this when you stamp and it will get on your project. So you'll know if you've got the right size block, if you pop it on and it, oops, I'm saying that it stands up, it's not standing up. It's actually not the right size, is it? This one is more like the right size because it stands up. It stands up so it's not completely falling over all the time it stands up where you want it to stand right okay so we just want to put for you we need to leave enough room for you to write all your lovely message and I'm going to put for you at the top and that is going to go on the back of here of our gift card like that with a bit of glue Like so. Hi, Carol. Good morning. Right, gonna put that one on there. You're very welcome. Yeah, sometimes it's easy just to grab the first block you see, and then it all wobbles about and it gets really annoying. Grab a block that fits. This, this shape is so much easier to cut out and quickly. Oh, I'm glad you've enjoyed watching this, Jen. It's a fun one, isn't it? We have Joanne to thank for this. She has such a beautiful project. Um, I loved this one. And I, all I did was make it bigger to fit a card. And then adapted it slightly to put a gift card on. <laughs> So here we go. Yes, Lucy, what I'll do is I'll pop them in this. When I load, the, I download this and edit it on Facebook, I will pop the measurements in the description box. So you can see it's very easy. It's a, it's a simple C6 card base um, size, but I will post the scores, the scoring lines and things on there. Could do the little, you know, the, what do they call the, the bit that comes out the bottom of the bell, the, the donger, the, the ringer, what do they call that? There's a name for the, for that bit. There's a name, what's it called? I don't know, but that it could do with being on the bottom of there, couldn't it? Okay, so there we are. There's our project. Happy Christmas. You've got a gift card holder. We're using a bit of the peppermint, or the gingerbread and peppermint sweet. We've got some of the real red rouge ribbon. We have got one stamp set I've used. So pick one that's got a few bits in it that are useful. I just use the happy holidays one. Happy Christmas sharing the promise of the season and a for you which is really useful it's got this nice robin on it i've used all of the stamps in this set uh over the last few weeks so yeah i used a few different dies and whatever you've got in your stash that's our project for today and this is the one i made for my customer thank you cards the clapper absolutely thank you amanda is the part of the bell that's what i was trying to get at <laughs> It could do with a clapper on the bottom, that bell, couldn't it? <laughs> there we go. So there's our gift card holder or, or Christmas card, whichever you want it to be. And here's Joe's beautiful original version. The clapper. Yes, you're absolutely right. And I couldn't remember. Thank you so much for joining me, ladies, live today. I will be back on Thursday um, for my YouTube live on Thursday evening, uh, UK time at seven o'clock. Um, if you are watching me live today, thank you so very much for joining me. I really appreciate it. If you are... Oh, I know. I was going to show you these cards. Let me show you those quickly. I told you I always forget to show you the things I say I'm going to, didn't I? So, at the three-day online convention this weekend, we had a lot of fun. And we had the opportunity to buy a stamp set. 
um, before the event so that we could stamp along with the stamp and share experience. Or you could use an alternative that you might have in your stash and they gave us some suggested. Um, so I used the alternative as it was and I used the hand penned bundle. It's absolutely beautiful. So my cards are the same sketch, the same design, pretty much exactly the same, except for I've got different flowers on mine and a different sentiment. So I've got this one, anything is possible. So we've got some background stamping using the stamp set on the card base. And I've used that kind of watermark. So it's uh, Blushing Bride with Blushing Bride ink. And then I've used a panel of the designer series paper some of the die cuts and just a little rectangle, very simple, and some of the gems that we've got at the minute uh, on there. So that's one. Uh, this was another one. So we've got same hand pen bundle. I've just done some stamping and I've used the same colours that are in the designer series paper. And I've picked out that um, cinnamon cider that's in the paper. There, I used some more of those gems. They're very simple cards, but quite effective. And then a little note card size. Oh, have a lovely day, Philomena. Enjoy your breakfast. And I picked out the garden green, but I would never have used this colour cinnamon cider for my stamping um, until it was suggested, and I absolutely love it. Um, and this is simply stamped on basic white cardstock. And can you see the glimmer? I've used Wink of Stella to pick up some of that cinnamon cider. So it just gives it a little bit of shading, a little bit of glimmer. And then we've got the die cuts just behind the sentiment and that designer series paper tucked in behind. Three very simple cards made using the hand pen suite. Oh yeah, so it's just get a little bit of inspiration, have some fun stamping. So that's what I promised to show you, so there we go. So have a lovely, lovely week, the rest of your week. Do something nice for yourself. Have a little bit of crafting. Take advantage of the lovely sale that we've got going on. Absolutely do that. And um, yeah, if you're watching me on replay, let me know that you're watching from the future. I would love to know. And if you like the cards. And thank you very much for watching. Um, I will put my shop, I will put the dimensions and everything else in the description bar below. And if you're watching me on YouTube, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. <laughs> Thanks very much, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.